His life was filled with rejection, addiction, and thoughts of ending it all. Peter Ruparelia understands what it's like to literally lose everything and the pain that goes with that. Peter, thanks for being here to share your story in 100 Huntley Street. Thank you for having me. You're interesting in the fact that your parents are from India, a Hindu background, but you were born in Uganda in East Africa. How did that all happen? Yes, I was born uh, in uh, Uganda um, in the 1970s when uh, Idi Amin came to power. He, he kicked all the Asians out. Oh, he was a horrible dictator. Yeah, and uh, so he gave us like 48 hours for our family to leave the country. Otherwise, we're going to get killed. What drew your parents to Uganda? Opportunity, jobs? Yes, uh, uh, my parents had businesses. The, like my parents and my brother, they had bus businesses back home in where I was born in Uganda. And now your family was Hindu. And if people are familiar with Hinduism, it's, it's a caste system. Were, That's right. Was your family, they very committed Hindus? Yes, most, uh, most of my family is committed Hindus. Um, they go to temple regularly. We used to, in fact, we used to all go to temple in Africa. Okay, let's go back to when your family was given 48 hours to get to Uganda. Right. You went to England first? Yeah, so what happened was um, when he gave us the deadline, 48 hours, different countries, Western countries, took refugees. So, uh, my, uh, so England and Australia and Canada, so people said, okay, we're going to take refugees. So my family ended up going to England. So for that period, we were... We lived in a refugee camp. In England, uh, it was a hard time for me because in, in the se 70s, there was a lot of, uh, you know, skinheads and, you know, there was a lot of uh, discrimination against, uh, you know, colored people. So I used to get beaten up at, 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 uh, at school, you know, by, you know, calling me derogatory names. Derogatory and, names, yeah. And, uh, oh, so you were what? Be beaten up all the time. <laughs> So when did uh, you come to Canada, and how did those doors open for you and your family? So what happened was in uh, 1982, my brother sponsored my parents, and and I was under 21 at that point. So any anybody under 21 at that when we did the paperwork, we could come in as a dependent of my parents. So that's how I came in. My brother had a place here, and my parents didn't like it because they didn't like the winter, so they went back to England. And then um, I decided to stay here. Here in Ontario. Okay. So then you uh, meet and marry a Canadian girl. I moved in with Connie. That was her name. Mm -hmm. And we, I lived with her for two and a half years. And the first five years were awesome. Like, you know, it, it was all new. And then it started going downhill. Two of her brothers were into drugs and alcohol. So I decided, uh, you know, because... It was like an escape for me. So I started dabbling in drugs and alcohol. Which affected your marriage, which, uh, and then she had a, an affair. Uh, That's right. You asked her to leave, and things really started to go downhill for you. That's right. So when I, uh, I one, one day I was just coming down to um, get some milk, and I saw her in the car with somebody else, and, and that really broke my heart. Devastating. It devastated me. So I kicked her out. I said, you can take everything, you know, I don't want anything. I had one mattress in my apartment. And that was, uh, that was when um, I came to a point where all the drugs that I had in the house, I, t I said, okay, I'm, you know, I don't want to live anymore. It was around Christmas time. So you were serious about ending your ending life? Ending my life, yes. What stopped you? So when I took all the drugs, right? Before that, I'll just go back a couple of steps. There was two guys that, I used to work for the Hudson's Bay Company, and two guys, they always tell me about Jesus and you know, come to church, and I say, I don't wanna know about Jesus and anything. And um, so when, when I was in my last breath, there's this bright, 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 bright light. So like, you, at that point, Peter, you feel that you're actually dying? Yes, I was like... you have taken so many drugs? Whatever I had in my house, I just took. And when the light came, it was like I was inst instantly sober. But the light, um, 
I didn't see Jesus. It could have been Jesus. It could have been Buddha. It could have been Krishna. It could have been any other gods. You didn't right? have a point of reference at that point. No, all I saw was the light. And all I saw was this powerful arms. Like, and I didn't see the face. I just saw the light. Powerful arms. And it was like I was a little baby cradled in the powers, uh, father's arms. Wow. Like, and when I had that encounter, I've never felt that kind of love that I felt then. And I don't think I'll feel that love until we go to heaven. Was it shortly after that point that somebody shared the message of Jesus' love and you said, I'm in? Yeah, no, on the next day, uh, yeah, I went to church and that's when I, I learned about the Holy Spirit. And then I knew that that was no Hindu gods or you know, it was Jesus that was holding me. And that just turned my whole life. And then I went and I gave my heart to the Lord. And ever since I've been serving him, I served uh, 10 years in one church. I started as an usher. Then because I was a DJ back home in England, I loved the music and the sound. And I, I went and, um, to do the sound for the church. And your journey to your relationship with Jesus is just so amazing. So thank you for sharing thank with you. us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And if you know, if you've never experienced uh, the Jesus that Peter was talking about, you know, many of us have not had that bright light thing that Peter experienced, but those of us that know him have experienced his love and his mercy. And if you've never experienced that, I'd encourage you to call our prayer lines today, 1-866-273-4444 and begin a journey with Jesus. There's so many adventures along the way. Challenges, yes, but amazing things to come. So again, give us a call, 1-866-273-4444.